This is the extended guide to the theoretical Tillman battleships of the United States Navy. So in the past few weeks, we've been looking at a number of battleship and battle cruiser designs, some of which were fairly substantial, so 50,000 ton plus displacement, not really matched until the Yamato and the Iowa classes for size. And you might be thinking, well, surely this is kind of the pinnacle of battleship design and before World War II, you can't really get much bigger than that. Oh boy, how you would be wrong. Enter stage left, Senator Pitchfork Benjamin Tillman. Not by all accounts a particularly pleasant character otherwise, but for the purposes of this particular story, we're focusing on his association with the naval budget and naval design. Now, Senator Tillman was not the world's biggest fan of the United States Navy. He didn't want it to expand in the first place. He was part of that majority in Congress that tried to starve the USN of money at every turn. And he took issue with the fact that every time the United States Navy came to the Congress with a battleship design, the battleship was bigger than the last one. He didn't quite seem to get his head around the fact that that's what everyone else was doing and America had to keep up if it wanted to be relevant. But there you go. Um, and he also got annoyed that even with these larger and larger battleships, they always seemed to come out just a little bit larger and a little bit more expensive than had actually been asked of from Congress. So he decided to do something about it. So in 1912-13, he asked the Bureau of Construction and Repair basically this, you know, forget incrementally bigger battleships, just what's the biggest battleship you can build? What's the biggest one you're going to ask me money for? What's that? Tell, you, tell me what this is. Now, this didn't actually go very far. Uh, some sketch designs were prepared and some of the lessons learned were applied to the Pennsylvania class, but since the Pennsylvania class was generally an enlarged Nevada class with a few tweaks here and there, that whole effort kind of just died a death. But come the outbreak of World War I, Senator Tillman found himself very much in favour of the war with Germany, and soon enough the Bureau of Construction and Repair had another request from him which basically said, once again, come on, biggest battleship you can build, throw it at me. I'm sure at this point they probably would have actually liked to literally do that, but there you go. Uh, they decided to come up with some design studies. The limitation on these battleship designs was the size of the Panama Canal. The canal locks were a thousand feet long, 110 foot wide, and could just about accommodate a ship with a draft of just a little under 40 feet. So the ships had to fit within those dimensions. But other than that, that was pretty much everything that they had to work for limitation wise. So what did they come up with? The first design, Tillman 1, was 70,000 tons displacement. It would have a speed of 26.5 knots. And if you're thinking so far, so Yamato-like, well, yes, but this was 20 years before the Yamato. And the main battery, well, 12 16-inch guns in four triple turrets, these being the longer 50 caliber types. Yeah, okay, you might be thinking, well, South Dakota 1920s design, five, ten years ahead of time, not what's so bad about that. Where does the displacement come from? Well, the answer is the belt armor. Uh, the belt armor was 18 inches thick. Um, this thing was less battleship, more mobile floating block of steel. Um, incredibly well protected. Um, pretty much the best protected ship that anyone had ever seen at that time. And vastly, vastly larger than anything that had been put into the water or even thought of being put into the water. Now, design two was same displacement, same speed. It dropped the belt armor by 5 inches down to 13 inches. And you might think, well, for 70,000 tons, 13 inches is about the armor on a Queen Elizabeth class battleship, maybe a Revenge. They're period ships. They're about a third of the weight. So where's all this extra weight coming from? Well, aren't you in for a treat? Whereas the previous Tillman 1 designer had 12 6-inch guns, this one went for... 24 16 inch 50 caliber guns in four sextuple turrets yep that's a turret with six guns yeah they weren't messing around with these ones by contrast tillman 3 was almost a disappointment i mean it was six and a half thousand tons lighter um it went back to the 12 16 inch in four triple turret armament and it only had that 13 inch belt of tillman 2 um, but all of these reductions were there because it had a speed of 30 knots. 
So, yeah, when you're talking about a ship with South Dakota 1 or Montana class armament and very heavy armor belt and a 30 knot speed and you're talking about this as a disappointing design, you kind of get where all these Tillman designs were going. Uh, but the fun doesn't end there. Because now we're on to Tillman 4. Now Tillman 4 was 10,000 tons heavier than 1 and 2. So from 70 to 80,000 tons. And you might be thinking, what god awful armament could you possibly stick on this thing to make it 10,000 tons heavier? Well, the speed was slower than the first two by one knot. It's 25 knots and a bit. It had the 24 16 inch guns in sextuple turrets of Tillman 2. But, everyone on your feet for this one, 19 inches of belt armour. Yep, it would combined the belt of Tillman 1, the armament of Tillman 2, added an extra inch to the belt armour, dropped a knot in speed, and gained 10,000 tonnes, and, well, yeah, this thing was just ridiculous. Anyway, now, bearing in mind that all of this was a design prepared by the Bureau of Construction and Repair on behalf of a senator who was annoyed with the United States Navy, you might be wondering, what was the United States Navy's reaction to all this? Well, I think this pretty much sums it up. They had no interest in a ship this size. They had no idea how they'd operate it. They had no idea how on earth they'd ever persuade Congress to pay for it. And even if they did manage to persuade Congress to pay for it, and they managed to expand their shipyards to a size that they could build such a thing, the cost would be so high they'd maybe get a couple of them built while everyone would just be building swarms and swarms of smaller battleships and turn up in 15 different places at once. But it gets even better because some bright spark in the Bureau of Construction and Repair was clearly warming to this task and decided, right, Tillman 4 is clearly the one to develop further. You can just imagine the United States Navy's reaction when they heard that particular bit of news. Because, you see, the United States Navy was in the business of conducting the construction of the very sensible standard line of battleships, and they really, really wanted to get on with that. But here came Tillman 4-1. Tillman 4-1, 80,000 tons, 25 knots and change, as you might have thought, only this time Whilst the belt armour has only been reduced to a pedestrian 16 inches, its new armament was 13 18 inch 50 calibre guns in six turrets, five twins and a triple. So yeah, um, HMS Agincourt kind of, except yeah, 18 inch guns. Help. <laughs> um. But the Tillman design would reach its crescendo with Tillman 4-2, the ultimate Tillman. 80,000 short tons, 975 feet long, 108 feet wide, 32 feet and 9 inches deep, speed 25.2 knots, belt armour 16 inches thick, main armament 15. 18 inch 50 caliber guns in five triple turrets you know if someone hadn't been preparing to call this thing the uss compensation they really really missed a trick now the ships carried some design innovations they were so large that they had a full flush deck and because this deck was so high above the water they were able to carry all their secondary armament in casements, which the US had in, been in the process of abandoning due to lower mounted casements being quite wet while at sea. But to give some visual reference to how big these ships were, well, here's a picture. Yeah, Tillman battleship. As long as a current dreadnought battleship with an entire pre dreadnought stuck in front of it, and obviously massing a lot, lot more. Now, either for a laugh, or possibly because Senator Tillman was part of the Naval Appropriations Committee, the US Navy actually took that final design and presented it to Congress in early 1917. I would have loved to be in the room when that happened. Senator Tillman then did everyone a favour by dying in 1918, and the battleship's procurement slipped off the naval radar. 
However, their design influence didn't fade entirely. The South Dakota class was influenced by some aspects of the Tillman design. You might have recognized that armament of 12 16-inch 50 caliber guns in triple turrets as South Dakota's armament, albeit the ship was obviously smaller, less heavily armed, and less heavily armored, and a bit, little bit slower. In 1934, the Navy Design Department dug up and revived some modified versions of the designs with eight 20 inch guns just in case japan decided to go screw it and break with the naval treaties in, of the time entirely obviously eventually they did with the yamato but nothing came of those particular sketches and every few years somebody would dig them out when the navy wanted a new battleship and wave them around and say why aren't you asking to build those to which the navy's response was always generally um we're the navy we know battleships you're a congressional staffer please go lock yourself in a room and hit yourself over the head with those plans until you stop talking so yeah, that's the Tillmans. A little bit of a different style of presentation for these ones, um, but they're just so ridiculous. I felt a little bit of a reverency was uh, a bit appropriate. Hope you enjoyed it, and we will re-enter the realm of the sane and the actually built next week with the Deutschland class of the 1930s. That's it for this video. Thanks for watching. If you have a comment or suggestion for a ship to review, let us know in the comments below.